Hi, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Today we are talking about how to get multiple subwoofers off one AVR or processor. Okay, so you've probably heard me bang on a bit about having multiple subwoofers in a room. Again, I would hesitate or hasten to say, I should say, that uh, the reason for multiple subwoofers is um, not to blow the doors off the neighbor's house, but because we want smooth and even bass in every seat in the room. That's what we're looking for, and multiple subwoofers actually manages this far better than many other forms of acoustic treatment, and is certainly far more predictable um, and easier to arrive at, at least in my opinion. So, on the back of most um, AV, uh, AVRs or processors, you'll see one of two connections. It'll either be an RCA connection like this, or it will be an XLR connection like that. Okay. Um, either way, you need to get that signal to your sub. And sometimes the sub has a different um, connection on it to your AVR. Um, Emotiva and Trinov and many other brands uh, use XLR outputs because that's the highest quality signal, whereas a lot of subwoofers you're limited to an RCA input. So you might have to do a conversion. We'll talk about that soon. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about the difference between um, RCAs and XLRs. In short, an RCA is known as an unbalanced um, connector or signal and um, the signal is carried on the center pin and the outside uh, area is the shield which is that sort of braided copper that you see on cables and the idea there is that any interference hopefully is captured by the copper and sunk to ground and then the signal itself uh, is the one that is obviously recognized by the equipment. With XLR what we have is we still have a shield but we have two signal cables and quite cleverly the way this is managed is that um, all of the uh, intended signals that start at the other end of the equipment make it through and are recognized and are basically passed, whereas anything that joins in at the cable, during the cable, um, affects both cables at the same time and in theory is cancelled out and therefore doesn't impact your signal. Um, this came out of concerts and studios and in fact when I first started off as a young audio engineer, long cable runs you know, were problematic and, and that's where the XLR uh, solution used to be also known as Canon connectors um, came to be and it is still probably the best way to connect your hi-fi equipment if you've got the XLR connections. The challenge comes in two areas for us one is what if one the connector at one end is different to the connector at the other end and the other challenge is what if I've got one socket or outlet and I've got four subwoofers. There are ways you can manage that. You can daisy chain it, for example. Um, that is one solution. But we prefer to run a cable to each sub. Uh, that gives you some redundancy as well. It, and that means that you know if they're daisy chained, um, uh, a bad signal is going to go to all subs. And if you break the cable or you get a disconnection, all your subs potentially stop, or at least the ones on the chain past that break can stop. Um, so. Um, we run four cables back to the processor or the AVR. Now let's have a look at what you can do if your processor and your subwoofers are using RCAs. The first thing you can do is you can actually split that signal. So you can have one plug and you can have four outlets um, and split that signal and send it to your subwoofer. There is a problem here in that you can reduce the signal level and yes, you can turn up your subwoofers a bit to compensate for it, but every time you turn up an amplifier, you're also amplifying the noise that's there, and splitting cables up and doing various things with them is one way that you can potentially introduce more problems. On more connections also means more points of failure as well. Um, if you have uh, XLR, the same thing applies. You would need to split your signal. Now this is an XLR basic splitter cable. Obviously this takes one output, uh, and turns it into two. But if you've got four subwoofers, you actually need three of these, don't you? Because you've got one into two, and then you've got to split each of these into two to get your four subs. Again, the same problem is that you are looking at a possible reduction in signal strength. So what can we do about this? Um, there are products in the market. Uh, QSC um, make a digital processor, which is very good. Mini DSP that you can see here makes one. I'm sure there's others. Uh, this is not a paid um, 
uh, video or you know supported and sponsored in any way we just happen to have these here because that's what we're working with at the moment um, so as an example this is a mini DSP 2.4 this is the version B 2 volt version um, and uh, quite simply you can plug the output from your AVR into the input on your um, mini DSP and now you have four outputs that can go off to your subwoofer uh, now that can work quite well, but interestingly enough we've actually found that we have a few challenges with this and sometimes we've ended up with subwoofer hum and, and that's not a pleasant thing. Um, however, this is your first uh, line of defence. It also, as you've probably seen from our other videos, and if you go and have a look through our channel, you'll see other videos that show you the interface for the Mini DSP. And this gives you independent volume control, switching, and parametric EQ on every single input and output. So it's a very powerful piece of equipment, as is the QSC, um, and they're just programmed in different ways. Um, so this is, the, uh, this is the unbalanced version, two RCA inputs, four RCA outputs. But again, what are we going to do if your uh, device only has XLR out? Well, what you'd need to do is you need to put one of these adapters into your um, AVR or processor. So this has XLR on one end, that would go in, your cable would run to here, and then off you go. The problem is you've still got this conversion going on and, um, you know, uh, again, we found that we sometimes have problems with that and we're not entirely sure why at this point in time and it does seem to differ from system to system. So what we decided to do is sort of take a step away from that um, and we have gone to the uh, Mini DSP 2x4 Balanced. Um, Part of the reason for this is we work on more balanced processors and um, uh, AVRs than, than anything else. Um, but we've also still been faced with the challenge that an awful lot of sub-manufacturers still just only use the RCA output. So we have to deal with the signal and we have to deal with the change in uh, balanced to unbalanced and, and possibly a mixture of those. I recently finished off a job that had subs that had a mixture. Uh, I had one sub running off uh, an amp, and the amp had an XLR out input, and the other three subs ran off uh, RCAs. So it was unbalanced. So, before I go any further, there are some other options. Um, this is a, a balanced to unbalanced isolation converter. And I have used this uh, before, I've tried this. Um, so basically I had uh, this going into the splitter like that. Um, and then this one uh, then went off to the amplifier. So we've got an RCA output here, which in turn had to be split. And the idea is that this isolated the signal so we didn't have any interference. And uh, I, it was questionable as to whether it was any great benefit and um, also it's got a volume control on it which we found was more likely to get knocked and in fact caused a problem because it accidentally got turned down and caused me all sorts of issues at some point. So we have tried converters and isolation transformers and things like that and we gave up on that as well. So what did we do? Um, the best solution that I have found so far uh, is with your output on your um, AVR, if it's an XLR output, well that's simple, we run an XLR um, plug into the AVR. Uh, I then take one of these leads, I either make them up myself or I cut them off and um, then I cable the end of those to this Phoenix connector. Now this is the input side here, so I would connect the uh, shield and the positive and the negative into here for input one and onto the other half for input two if there is one. Normally, perhaps just the one. So we've got this now plugged into our AVR and this now is wired into here. So we've got a balanced signal coming out of our AVR, a balanced signal into here into a unit that processes a balanced signal. What do I do at the other end? It's kind of simple. Let's just flip the whole process around. This goes off to our equipment now. So again, I take another cable, 
Normally I cut the cable in half action. I use one plug at this end and one plug here. And I wire this onto the output there. So now I've got XLR coming in, XLR coming out on channel one, for example. Okay. Um, however, as I said, this was a mixed job. So the next thing I did was I then took um, some female RCAs and wired those to the remaining outputs. So I actually had, I'll just clear this out of the way, I had three female RCAs and I had an XLR, so it looked something like that. Um, I'll just grab one more female RCA. So I now had three subwoofers. Now, Mini DSP, and I'm sure QSC as well, and other manufacturers have their own um, uh, instructions on how to wire uh, balanced and unbalanced. So what you can see now on the screen here is the instructions that are for wiring an XLR um, output and an XLR input. And now you can see the instructions for an unbalanced output and an unbalanced input. All right, so you can always get a screen grab of those, um, but that shows you how to wire it to here. Uh, the S stands for shield, and then you have positive and negative. Uh, and if you're not sure, the pins are normally numbered on an XLR cable. If you look really closely, you might need a bit of a bright light and some glasses like I do, but they are numbered one, two, and three. Number one is normally the shield, and then two or three carry the positive and the negative signal. Just make sure that you're consistent. Please always check your cables and make sure that we check what we call continuity. So you use a meter to go from pin to pin. You then make sure your signal is not crossing any of the other pins. And then if you have it, a, a lower voltage, what they call a mega, which actually tests insulation, but uh, low voltage, guys, not, not high voltage. You can get megas that go up into thousands of volts and you'll actually then end up destroying the insulation on your cable, um, potentially. Um, so all that does is just make sure that you haven't got any shorts that are going to affect your system. Or if the shorts are fairly close, they can actually create other problems as well. So there you go. Um, this then means that the um, balanced um, digital signal processor allows us to take XLR in, it allows us to take unbalanced in, and it allows us to output XLR or unbalanced. And I've actually found this probably to be the most stable solution that I've got at the moment in terms of getting multiple subwoofers out. There is another advantage to this as well. And that is, if you look at the other videos that have the interface for this, you can see that, um, as per this screenshot, that I now have control over pretty much every function of each of the subs. And the great thing is, when I'm doing room calibrations, I've got four subs, or three subs, or whatever, that I can turn on and off just by the click of a mouse using the PC interface or the, or the Mac interface on this. And... Um, I can then uh, work on one sub at a time, I can balance the levels, check the phase, um, and I can, um, uh, I can also um, invert the phase if I want to, and there's a whole heap of stuff, that, and add a whole heap of parametric EQ as well. So there you go folks, um, hopefully that's made sense. What we've covered is how to deal with an RCA or XLR output from your AVR. We've talked about the different types of signals. Uh, we've talked about um, uh, how to effectively wire up these cables to these pinouts, and we've got the diagrams for those there. And we've talked about, you know, the, perhaps the ease of using a splitter, but the disadvantages as well. So there you go. If you, um, if you need to, these can be got either through us or through... Um, uh, minidsp.com at the moment with the exchange rate in the US dollar. Unfortunately for us in Australia, this has suddenly become a bit more expensive uh, at this point in time anyway. Hopefully uh, later on that won't be the case. Um, but it is um, a great piece of gear. The, this, the retail price on I think is, this is about 115 US. Um, but in terms of uh, what it achieves, it's, it's really a great piece of kit. Uh, you know, if you spent enough money, in, and I'm assuming that you have, because if you are looking at XLRs, either on your processor or your subs, then it's worth getting this right. 
and I would say that you want to avoid just sort of daisy chaining um, splitters if you can. It also makes them a nightmare to manage. You, you're only left with whatever your AVR's got in it and you're left with whatever the subwoofers have on them. You've got nothing really for, for your control in the interim and for calibrating and setting up and aligning your subs. There's probably one more comment to be made and that is that um, if you look at products like Trinov and uh, other high-end processors, Acurus or Acurus, um, and uh, some of the new products from Storm Audio, etc. Um, you will notice that on some of those, any of the outputs can be subwoofer outputs. So you can have one, two, three, four, or more subwoofer outputs that you can assign. On products like that, I would tell you the default of using an output for each subwoofer is going to be more powerful. It's going to give you a better result with less interim issues, it's going to have less connections and less interference and less problems. Um, but uh, the problem is with that, if you've bought the processor, for example, to do 16 channels, you're going to take up four channels for your subwoofers. And, um, you know, if you're trying to set up a multi-channel room, well, you may want, you may want to change that. So um, I would just say to you, if your option now, on the high-end equipment is to use an individual output per sub and you can do that, please do that. I know that Tom Garrett will be thanking me for saying that. Um, but if you understand the reasons, they're very, very sound. Um, if you can't do that or it's just that you couldn't really go to, for example, a 32-channel unit um, and you really wanted to make the most of your room and you're trying to wring every drop out of it, which I understand, then this or something like this um, is your solution. But I would say to you, in our experience now, if you've got a unit that manages balanced connections, even if you're just using RCAs, uh, or especially if you're using a combination, that's the way to go. Look, I hope this has been useful to you. Um, certainly, uh, the way that we've set this up now, and I'll just recap very quickly, with, um, uh, with uh, an XLR, um, connection on the input and then one, two, three or any combination of XLR and RCOs on the output wired as shown gives us a great result. Okay so look I hope that's helped thank you for joining us and um, obviously again please comment below and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.